Basikiti Caprando. Okay, are we all there? Second King chapter 9. The Bible says, And Elisha, and Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets, and said unto him, Guide up thy loins, and take this boss of oil in thy hand, and go to Ramoth Gilead. It says, um, and you can bring that. It says, and when thou comest thee that look at thee, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, change translation, and go, go in and make him arise up from among his brethren and carry him to an inner chamber. Then take the flask of oil, then take the flask of oil, pour it on his head. And say, this is what the Lord says. I anoint you king over Israel. Open the door and escape. Don't wet. Um, so the young man, so the prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he arrived, the army commanders were sitting there. So he said, I have a message for you, commander. Jehu asked, for which one of us? Um, he answered for you, commander. God have a message for you today. So Joe got up and went into the house. The young prophet poured the oil on his head and said, This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I anoint you king over the Lord's people, Israel. Then jump to maybe 11, 11 to 13. So when Jehu came out of his master's servant, so when Jehu came out, came out to his master's servants, they asked, they ask, is everything all right? Why did this crazy person come to you? Mark that word. That's part of my emphasis today. Crazy person. Remember, this guy was a, a prophet, right? He so said, why did this crazy person come to you? Then he said to them, you know the sort and the ranting. Now use another translation in this verse. I want us to repeat the same verse we just read now. Verse 11. KJV. Then Jehu came forth to the servant of his laws. And one said unto him, It's all well. Wherefore came this mad fellow? Now they call the prophet a mad fellow. Hello, somebody. And they call him a crazy person. Some translation calls him a maniac. Okay? So... Came this mad fellow to thee, and he said unto them, Ye know the man and his communication, meaning the way he talks. So, so that's, that, that is the way they look at the man of God, the prophet. So, and they said, It is false, tell us now. And they said, Toss and toss spake he to me, saying, Toss, say the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Keep going, I've anointed the king over Israel. Each man quickly took his garment and put it under Jehu on the bare steps. They blew the ram's bone and proclaimed Jehu is king. I wanted to say, I am king. Glory to God. Father, bless your word today in Jesus' name. As we, Lord, as we proceed and share the word of life, we trust that you will pour your spirit and speak to your children in such a way we've never heard before. Cause us to make meaning out of your word. Give us utterances. Give us, oh God, a depth from your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to quickly share with you. I've been discussing. I didn't know I was going to continue with this story today. But as I was, I was asking the Lord, the Lord to take me back to where we remember in the last few weeks. We've been <laughs> discussing about Jehu. Hello, somebody, if you've been paying attention, I, 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 I thought I wanted to preach one sermon from that story, and then the Lord kept giving me a word. And some of these teachings I've been dealing with in the last um, in the last three weeks, it's a little bit difficult teaching. It's not a straight teaching. It's more or less a revelational teaching. So if you are not very attentive, you will lose concentration because sometimes it's a bit hard to deal on revelational issue than to treat, you know, teach on straight message. There are messages that are straight message. Hello, somebody. But when you're dealing with, one, you know, with scriptures, wanting to invest certain scriptures, sometimes it can be a little bit complicated. 
to the, to the image show, it can be like, what is he talking about? But to somebody who has you know, tuned his or her ears to the understanding of the word of God, will actually appreciate the depth that comes from the world. Amen? So it's important we listen carefully this morning. Let's see how the Lord will lead us. Now, I want to quickly begin with this. It is important to know, I think I'm discussing on what I said, things to learn from Jehu and his assignment. Things to learn from Jehu and his assignment. So let me say, never seek to become famous. Never seek to become, to become famous if you do not desire to be criticized. If you don't want anybody to analyze you and your family, analyze, analyze your character, your work, your look, and everything you are and represent, if you don't want any of those to happen to you, then never seek to become anything. Just be normal, be ordinary. Once you're normal and ordinary, you may still have some little problem, but not too much pressure. At least you can be hidden in your community. And never think to, to become successful simply because you want to avoid people talking down on you. The more you are successful, the more you have challenges, the more you have problems, the more people tend to analyze you, take what they call critical analysis of you, a critical analysis. So if you're not very strong enough, you, you will give in and um, even take your life. Somebody just sent me a story this morning. I haven't actually read, but I've seen a title. A man that opened a car company, a car rent company, committed suicide because of debt. Other people are enjoying the company right now. I'm going to read the story probably today when I get home. But here in Auckland, other people are enjoying the company. 2016, he took his life. He lost somebody. He opened the company, wanted to be, wanted to be successful, feed his family, and become useful in the society. But that's something that killed him. Hello, somebody. For the father, you are anointed does not mean that people will honor you. Hello, somebody. In fact, the more you are anointed, the more you become an issue in the community, before, be, the more you are being, you know, so I examined. So in this verse of the scripture, I want to share with you a few things we've got to learn today. We're gonna, we should learn from what happened to Jehu. We, we are told... That the, the man of God sent one of his prophets. Some of you that have been following the teaching, you probably know the background. So I don't want to go into the background right now. I just want to get into it. Sent one of his, teach, his prophets to go and anoint who? Jehu king. To go and pour the oil on him. So this man, this, in other words, that, that, that man is one of those. The, that man you know, carries the oil, the oil that makes king. Yeah, lots of people, they, what they have in their hand are oils that make generals, oils that make kings. So God, the prophet of God gave Jehu, halaba shatalaba, gave Jehu that horn of oil, I mean, gave his servant, who is also a prophet, let's call him assistant pastor, to go and anoint Jehu, who had been waiting for years because of um, Elijah's inability to anoint him. So we were told... This man of God went and anointed Jehu, and when he finally left, and when Jehu came out, they asked Jehu, say, um, um, who, what, what does this guy came to do? And verse 11, he may have to go back there again. What does this guy came to do? And he says something. Please go back to verse 11. I want you to pay attention. I'm, I want to take you slowly until I'm, I take you to where we are going. And I'm telling you, God is going to give you something if you pay attention. They say, when Jehu came out to his master's servant, they asked, is everything all right? Why did this crazy person, and some scriptures call him, why did this maniac, you know, person in, in come to you? Then he said to them, you know this thought and their ranting. Use another translation. Say, you know his behavior. Now, in other words, they've been looking at this prophet of God as a man who is not really sound. Hello, somebody. They're looking at him, even though he is a prophet, assistant prophet, let's call him assistant prophet Elijah. But among the generals and the commanders, they do not understand what they really represent. Because these guys were prophets and they were quite prophetic in nature. So to them, the thing they say look like ranting. 
the, the commanders who were Elite armies, that even though they were Elite in, you know, in, in, in Ahab's army, hello somebody, but they did not understand the nature of prophet and prophecy and the carriers of this mantle. Hello somebody, they see this man that carries this oil that make king as what as mad people as crazy people. Even though he was the same man that came and poured the oil on him and said, from today you've become a king. But when he came out, he said, when they asked him, what is it that he came to do? He said, you know him. You know the way we look at him. We all, you, know, you know his behavior. We don't know. He's just a mad guy, just a ranting guy. You know the way he communicates. So all the life of this prophet, this general has been looking at this prophet as a mad man. And now the question to, that comes to heart is this. Could it be that in spite of all that you've done for people, they still look at you as a mad man, as a mad woman, in spite of, you know, pouring the oil that have made them, in spite of you having pampered them, having taken care of them, they could still be looking at you as a mad person, as a maniac. Hello, somebody. Could it be that even... Do you know that you could, you could buy a house for people and while you're handing them that key in their heart, they still don't like you. One pastor says, he, 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 he got, somebody gave me a new brand car, you know, a very good car, something like all this kind of a Land Cruiser or Range Rover and it and he was, he was new car. And he called one pastor who does not like him in the city and gave the car to the pastor. And one of his assistant asked him, say, man of God, why are you doing this? You know that this man don't like you. He said, I know he doesn't like me, but I want to bless him. He said, I'm blessing him because that is why God blessed me because of my kind of heart. He said, I choose to bless him. He said, if I bless him, even though he doesn't like me, God will continue to bless me. Bless him. He said, as he was preaching, he said, even, though, even up to now, that man still don't like me, but I blessed him with a new car. So for the fact that you are giving a house key, bought a house, and give it to somebody, does not mean that sometimes their view of you will change. They could still collect that car, yet they still look at you as a deranged person. So, never think that that horn you carry, also, that oil you carry in a horn, making kings up in kings, will make people change their perspective of you. And sometimes you keep wondering, why is it that um, that uh, uh, you know that I've done for him or for her, and yet she's not loving me as she ought to. He's not loving me as he ought to. Hello, somebody. Love is a thing of the spirit. Hello, somebody. Hello. People do not normally love you because you bought, you bought them burger, take them to KFC and to Nando's and give them some drink. Hello, somebody. They love you because. They choose to love you, not because of what you've done for them. And otherwise, they can still buy people ten car and they still hurt you. But the question is, why is it that they, we are looking at this prophet of God, a man with the oil making kings, a man with the oil that raises kings? Why were they looking at him as just somebody who runs as a mad person, as a crazy person? The reason is because. They did not understand where he was coming from. So I say, number one, avoid criticizing what you do not understand. Hello, somebody. <laughs> what happened in that scripture, what we've read in this verse, is an indication of how some people or worldly folks see or treat us, um, treat some of us, or treat believers that have what it takes to make them. We know that we believe that. We know that we know what is happening in this world today. You know, as a matter of fact, the, what is happening is not natural right now. You understand it better than average, average man in the street. But yet, an average man in the street who is a secular person thinks that you are a foolish person. As a matter of fact, some of your brothers and sisters who do not go to church considers you as just a religious person. Hello, somebody. The thing you are, there's a, a word they normally use a, 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 for a religious people, English word, I've forgotten that particular word. So they call us fanatics. Hello, somebody. I don't know where that word came from right now. <laughs> Sometimes they call us fanatics. They think you are overzealous, you are over 
says, you don't know what you're thinking, it's all about Bible, all about church. And they don't even know you know better than them. Hello, somebody. Because every day you hear a word of life, a word that changes life. All they do is, this, like, like this weekend now, many of them are sleeping. No word, no life. If you ask them, they say, oh, we're tired, we're just resting, I'm going to work tomorrow morning. That tomorrow morning they'll be on their way to work with a dead spirit, with a dead body. But you that is in the church receiving word of life, they will still look at you tomorrow morning you know, as a foolish religious fanatic. Not knowing that you have the oil that could literally make their life. So, when the world do not understand who you are, they will begin to criticize what you represent. Hello, somebody. They criticize everything you represent, whether you like it or not. Elisha could not have sent that particular servant to go and anoint the king to be if he was not mentally stable or trustworthy. Hello, hello somebody. Yet yeah, the world seems to call him a mad, a, a mad man. Hello, somebody. They see him as a madman. Should it be right now that people are seeing you as a mad fellow? Hello, somebody. They think that you've missed it, you've missed your way. Even though that you dress well, they still think that you just know nothing. But your, he- your God is in heaven laughing at them. I say your God is laughing at them in the name of Jesus. But should you stop making kings because they don't believe in you? No. Should you stop carrying the own of the oil because the, those, those you are caught annoying do not believe in you? No, no, not at all. Hello, somebody. Most, 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 many pastors miss this equation. And that's why too many pastors are quitting today. Hello, somebody. A lot of pastors have quit. Hosea chapter 9, verse 8. Because they think they have not been appreciated. Hello, somebody. Pastors commit suicide these days. Check in America, many of them are committing suicide. Hello, somebody. Because they think they have not been appreciated. If you are waiting to derive your joy. If you are waiting to derive your joy from how people see you, hello, you will not continue your journey on earth. You've, come, you've got to come to a point in your life where you become like, you know, it's like you become like a stone. That no matter what they pour on you, it washes out. You develop a, a thick skin. Hello, somebody. You no longer live or walk in such a way based on how people see you because you know what you carry. They see you as a mad woman, a madman, a foolish daughter or son, but you know that in your spirit you carry something that could make me. Say to somebody, I carry something. The Bible says Ephraim was a washman. Oh, Lamba, use another translation. Use, H- 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 use the other translation. Kamala Gidi. So this scripture, a lot of people mistranslated a different scripture. You, but the NIV gave a good translation. Not even, use, use the other translation, the, the one we normally use, H what? Kamala. Yeah, Kamala. It's saying, oh my God, what is happening here? Ephraim, what, Ephraim watchman, is, is my God. The prophet encounters a foolish name on all his ways. Hostility is in the hands of his God. But if he used a knife, he says that, he said, the prophet along with my God is a watchman over Ephraim. He said, yet hostility awaits him in the hands of his God. I love, somebody. I love the way knife is translated. So he said, the prophet along with my God. In other words, it takes a prophet and God to guide a nation, to watch over a nation. He said, even though he is a watchman over Ephraim, he said, yes, nay, hostility awaits him, not outside of the house, but in the house of his God. That implies the people that will redefine you wrongly are not people that are that are outside your circle. In most cases, they are within your circle. They could be your family members. Hello, somebody. They could be your long-term friends. 
they can be your, you know, your brothers in the house of God. I could be preaching for, you know, to, to some of you for 10 years. You may not even believe in me. But the fact that you're coming here every Sunday does not mean that you truly believe in me. Now listen, somebody. There are still people that believe in me, but there are still people that will not believe in me, and there is nothing I can do about it. And those people need to be there so that we, so that we continue to work harder. Because if they are not there, I could realize thinking that I have arrived. But they might know that some folks do not believe in what I'm doing. They might continue to ask God for his grace and mercy. And continue to ask him to set my table, you know, in the presence of my enemy. So that someday when I'm eating, I may call them to come and join me. If the Lord releases my heart to do so. <laughs> so sometimes... You need those enemies who will redefine you wrongly. When Mandela was handing over to, to President Mbeke, you know, former President Mbeke, he said to Mbeke, do not malign or ostracize all those party members who do not believe in you. He said, because they are the ones that will taste and try your policy. He said, if you ostracize them, cut them off because they do not believe in you, you could be heading for destruction. So sometimes you need an enemy. With that enemy, there will be no table. Hello, somebody. The Psalm, the book of Psalms 23 is about, about enemy and table. Hello, somebody. Without the enemy, there will be no Psalm 23. So for God to prepare, you, prepare your table, there must be enemies. And sometimes you need to have heart to call them to come and eat when the Lord has finally blessed you. Everything you do, whatever you do, never, hello, somebody, now, don't pursue your enemy. Don't pursue those who criticize you, even though you have released the oil on their life. Don't spend your time pursuing them. Keep pursuing them. Keep listening to what they are saying. No. Spend time pursue success. Not just wanting to be successful. Hello, somebody. But spend time pursuing your purpose. I think I better use that word. Spend time pursuing your mission. Keep pursuing your mission. Don't keep pursuing hearing. If you keep hearing what they are saying, you're going to lose balance. Hello, somebody. If that is all you are thinking about, you're going to lose balance. You're going to lose balance. So, I always say to my wife, I say, success is the best answer to your enemies. Hello, somebody. Success is the best answer to your enemies. Can somebody say, success is my best answers to my enemies. So whatever you do, make sure you succeed in the presence of your enemies. If you fail, hello somebody, then what they are saying is true. They will assume that all we, all we said about you, all that we said about you or, con or conceived about you is true. But the more they talk, the more you should keep succeeding. When you finally succeed one day, they will tell you that indeed God's hand is on your life. That's my pastor friend in America. He told me how people broke his heart and left him. He said, man of God. He said, when people leave you, he said, never curse them. Hello, somebody. He said, he said if I'm to curse, he said, I would have cursed so many people. <laughs> Hello, somebody. He said, but I, I, I and my wife prayed only one prayer. He said, God never allowed these people that leave us to meet us where they leave us. Oh, you didn't hear me, somebody. <laughs> You didn't hear me, somebody. They never allow them to meet us where they leave us. That should be your prayer. Instead of, you know, being busy, crying, thinking about it, you know, what happened 20 years ago. Hello, somebody. Move on with your life. Do something that will benefit your society, benefit you, and benefit people around you. Many years to come, KMGC, We'll be raising one of the biggest flags in this nation. Yes, from now. Many people that started with us, someday we come to say, we now know that God is with this church. So, instead, as I was sitting here today, and the worship in the team, they were doing a good job. The young people, I'm just thanking God for them. I'm just appreciating them in my heart. Guys, you guys are awesome. This morning, I mean, somebody, you guys are the future of the ministry. You are the people. So we are looking unto you guys. 
Every Sunday we pray for you and believe God to use you. And we are believing God for more. But as I was sitting here, and sometimes, you know, during worship, some of us don't come on time. Amen? Let's just try. Because you go on time to make money every, every Monday morning. Hello, somebody. Let's just try. I wake up early. Some, almost every Sunday, I spend like three hours, almost every two hours on Sunday morning. Hello, somebody. I still work, wake up early, do all I need to do. But sometimes I came a little bit early than you guys. A little bit early. A little bit. <laughs> not, not too early. Hello, somebody. Amen. But uh, why don't you come and hear the word? Come and be part of what God is doing. But as I was sitting here this morning and was looking at most of the empty seats, and I said to myself, I said, I'm not saying, I, I, I'm not claiming this. But I say, even if no one is in KMGC again, I still know in my heart that hand of God is on KMGC. Amen. I still know it will succeed, it will yes. prosper, yes. God will do something yes. with this church. Because this church is a church on a mission, a church on the map of God's will, a church on mandate or with mandate. We are in God's map. And on, on, until you stop thinking in that manner, you will not, uh, you will not, you will not um, continue, you will, you will continue to uh, allow this thing that is hovering all, all over you to control you because you are working on based on what you see and not on what God is doing. Second Kings 9. I'm going to show you something. 17, 19 to 20. But let me say this. Second Kings 9, 17, then 19 to 20. Some of these people that think that we are foolish do not even know we see them as the most foolish people. Oh, you're too cool for me, somebody here. Can I live for some folks who are not too cool right now? Some of these guys who think that we, we ain't got it all together. They think that, you know, we are, we, we are in la-la-la land, right? Hello, somebody. They don't know how we look at them. Now, remember I told you that Jehu and his men were calling the prophet who just anointed him a crazy man. He said, you know the man, the way he talked. So all the while, even before he was anointed, they were looking at him as a crazy, a crazy guy. In fact, the guy he sees as a crazy guy, not even knowing that that was the guy God was going to use to make him. Amen. You didn't hear me. You're quiet on that. <laughs> so he said, you know the man. Remember, Jehu said, you know the man and the kind of things he says. Yes. So all the while, as he was a commander, he always said that particular prophet as a madman, as a maniac, as a maniac. Amen. Hello, somebody. A man with mental disorder. But he never expected in his lifetime that that same man he sees as nobody was the man God was going to use to pause something that will forever change his life. Now, some of the people you think today that they are, they are nobody, they are, you know, they are nothing. They may be the ones God will use to pour the oil that will make your future. Hello, somebody. So, so sometimes don't look down on things you don't understand. Why is it that they did not understand those prophets? It's because they are not, Jehu is not in prophetic ministry. He does not understand what it takes to be a prophet. So everything a prophet does, once you are not in my line, most of my decision will look like what? A rubbish, you know, a foolish decision. Sometimes, some of, I've, been, I've been preaching for 20 something years. I lost somebody. I got born again about 28 years ago. Been preaching in the last 25 years. Okay? So, the, the things you've done for at least five years, you have a little bit of experience in it. Something you've done for 20 years, you probably have experience in it. You are doing different things, and I'm doing different things. So, when I make certain decisions based on what I do and what God has called me to do, it may look strange now. Hello, somebody. But if you are patient with me, you will see where we are going with that decision. I'm not trying to say if you have experience, you've got it all. There are still things you don't know. Because a wise man is a man who knows small of every little thing or little of every small thing. Hello, somebody. So if you don't know how to cook, you are not a wise man. You're not a fully wise man because you just don't know how to cook. I'm just learning now to cook, you know. The other day I cook a good rice. A good rice. And I give it to my wife. I say, enjoy it. Hello, somebody. 
Hello, somebody. She's been too busy these days. So I call my daughter, Bill. I say, well, I said, Mama is busy now. So we all have, have got to learn how to cook because our helper is not, is not always there now. Lest we're going to die of hunger. <laughs> So, before I can live, the other day, I went there, I got there, and she was sleeping. She's doing night nice job. And so, I, we go to the kitchen. There is nothing there. There is food in the fridge, but nothing there. That was true. So, I said, I, I was thinking, what are we going to do? So, I quickly opened one of the pots. There was a small stew there. I said, what am I going to do now? My spirit said, wash the rice, pour it on that stew. <laughs> pour it on that stew. Then I want to do, my, then somebody said, hold on, just boil, po- boil the hot water, pour it on that, that small stew, tell us somebody, then wash your rice, put some ingredients on that small stew, and then take that rice, pour it there, and when I did it, it came out very good. <laughs> and I, w- I was so excited. I've, not, I'm, I've never been used to, even when I was a bachelor, I normally eat co- coca oats all the time. So I was inside there. So the next day again, uh, after two days, I went to the kitchen. There was nothing there. My spirit said, because the way you did it that day, you can still repeat the same thing. So, I know how to fry rice, but now I don't know how to cook jello. So I quickly said, okay, I know what to do. In the same way, I fry rice, okay? Just fry the stews, put everything there, wash the rice, put it in there, and it's going to turn out better. And I, and I did this thing. <laughs> I, I asked all my children, they said, this is good. <laughs> and I asked them to rate my cook. And they, some of them gave me some good rating. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And I took it to the bedroom and gave it to my wife. She was so shocked. She'd never seen that dimension before. <laughs> she said, this is God. This is God. <laughs> and now I'm resolved not to die of hunger. Because season has changed, therefore I must change. Say to somebody, change. Because season has changed. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Lord, we worship you. So, anyway, if you come back to this scripture, let's see something. Now the watchman was standing on the tower in Jezreel. He saw Jehu's troops. Approaching and shouted, I see troops. Joram responded, choose a rider and send him to meet, to, to meet, meet them and have him ask, do you come in peace? Now Joram is the son of Ahab. He is the king. Remember, Jehu was anointed you know, to, 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 to destroy the hands of what Ahab. That was just his assignment to this man to the house of Ahab, and rule over the nation. So immediately the oil came on him. He did not delay for one second. He ran with that oil. Some of us are still delaying. Delay no more. I said delay no more. In Jesus' name. So when he was running to go and dismantle the kingdom. Now let's see verse Allah. Now, so he sent out a second husband husband who went to them and said this is what the king asked do you come in peace Jehu answered what do you have to do with peace fall behind me because Ahab the family of Ahab do not know what it means to have peace they rule the people with iron hand and they massacred they shed blood now the son is asking the, the, the commander are you coming with peace for or, you know Remember, in the Old Testament, they always have what they have, what they have a watchtower. In that watchtower, you have a watchman. So that watchman looks over the city to see when the enemy is coming in. So when they said the way Jehu was riding to the city, you know, they went to say, is everything okay? Because such a thing happens when there is war. They lost somebody. But then the Jehu said, no, no, not, everything is not okay. There is somebody, everything is not okay in this season. It's a time of war. They lost somebody. Now watch it. Now let's move to verse 20. Now watch this. That's my emphasis. Again, the watchman reported, he reached them but hasn't started back. Also, the driving is like that of Jehu, son of Nimshi. Mark this word very well. He drives like a mad man. What is So in the palace, the new Jehu is like, the Jehu's characteristic you know, was not clear to them. In their thinking, they think that Jehu asked like a madman. So the, the, watchman, the man in the watchtower was able to decipher. 
Hello, somebody. The, the man who was riding, they knew the way Jehu rides, Jehu drives. Hello, somebody. Because they knew the way he rides. So he could sense that this looked like the, the, the driving of Jehu. He drives like a madman. In other words, they have always seen Jehu as a mad driver. Hello, somebody. The same Jehu who was calling the prophet with his man a mad prophet did not even know that in the seat of power, hello, somebody, even though he was a commander, he was being seen, hello, as a madman himself because he had some unclear characteristics. They could not trust his character. But you see how God worked. Even though Jehu was seen as a mad guy too, God went and chose this mad guy. Hello, somebody. God went and chose a man who people in power see as a madman. In other words, it doesn't even matter who you are right now or what has happened in your life. You could be God's candidate. I say you are God's candidate. How is it that God chose Paul of all the people in the city? How could God choose a man who was instrumental in killing and dismantling the apostolic ministry and disciples? Hello, somebody. Yet God chose Paul. That implies if God chose Paul, God have no problem calling me. If God chose Paul, God will not have that. We have no problem calling you. Some of you are thinking right now that you are a rotten sinner. Hello, somebody. And you don't think that God can make anything out of you. In spite of all that God is saying to, you know, to encourage you to do what you're doing. All you're saying to God, you know, I'm a sinner, Father, look for another person. But if a man that was seen as a madman in the seat of power could be called and could be anointed, what about you that is still coming to church? Am I talking to somebody? So you are better than you think right now. Help me talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I am better than I look. I am better than I feel. I am better than I think. I may not be seen as a good man, as a good woman, yet I am God's choice. Help me give somebody a high five. Say, I am the choice of God. It doesn't matter how you look at me. <coughs> if they were to add Joram and the house of Ahab to choose a man to replace them, Jehu will never come close. Lord, somebody. Because in the palace, he was not seen as a good man. They thought he had a character problem. He drive like what? Like Jehu, the son of Nimshi. So, in other words, the palace has been observing his character. He was not even accepted in the seat of power. And some of you right now, you may not even be accepted by your colleagues, by your loved ones, by people you think that should care about you or care for you. And when you look at the way they receive you, 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 you have depression. But why must you allow people to define who you are? Lord, somebody, have God told you that you're rejected? Even though they don't like you in the seat of power, the Lord is saying, you are my choice. Oh, you're too quiet on that. I said, the Lord said, you are my You are my You are my I'm excited about this. You're not even excited. The Lord said, you are my choice. Oh, Oh. the choice of the Lord. Prince, you are the choice of the Lord. Oh, no one damn stay alive. When about 500 people is gone, 10 million people net positive, God still keeping us. The reason is because we are God's choice. May his grace rest on you today. Grace to rock. Grace to take over. Grace to possess nation. Grace to conquer. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter who has written you off. When that oil comes on you, Image the difference. Amen. I said, image the difference. Amen. I'm slowing down in this sermon. I want to proceed, but do you know that Jehu being, this is not part of my sermon, but just Jehu being in that kingdom for a long time. He, he's been a commander for a long time, a long time, a trained commander. Well, how come he was not able to dismantle the house of Ahab? 
I lost somebody, even though he had gone, had uniform, had training. I lost somebody, probably had name in that society, but he couldn't do anything until that thing was poured on him. And the man that deposited that grace on him was the unlikely person. The people that we rule this nation are unlikely people. I told my, one of my son, I said, you'll be a prime minister in this nation. And one of the things I want him to do once he becomes a prime minister, take over immigration. Yeah, <laughs> immigration department. That, that area, I will tell him to make sure. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to say it oh, in, the, in, you know, in the open, what I would want him to do with that, with that department. I don't want to say dismantle it. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I always think about it that that I said my last baby the other day, that boy have all sort of, uh, he, he, can, he, he can throw ball, he can play music, he can play band, he can, he can do any, any kind of thing. He's so versatile. He somebody. So the other day I was talking with somebody, as I'm thinking one of these, one of these sons or children of mine, one of, I think one or two to go into politics. Somebody said to me, your, your last son can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and this week I say, you'll be a prime minister of this nation. And are you going to take over that department? Amen. I don't want them to come after me. Amen. Unless somebody, <laughs> until I have the passport first. <laughs> so uh, there are things I don't want to say right now. So they don't come after me and say you look like a terrorist. <laughs> so, so God's people, the unlikely people sometimes are the ones that we rule. Hello, somebody. Look here, Jacinda. A young lady, 38 years. Okay? Nothing, haven't even said I do. That's the area I have a little bit of problem in. Yeah? I mean, I'm in line, so. <laughs> that's just that area. I lost somebody. She's smart. Thank God for her. We thank God for her. She's, she's, um, at least she's showing an example to other young ladies that God can use them. But I have problem in one area. I really have problem about it. In U.S., she can rule. I lost somebody. But in New Zealand, you know this country? The country is spiritually bankrupt. I'm sorry to say. Because even Christians don't know the difference. You see, in this Sato clan, you know, they are labor stronghold. And who are they? They are most of them are Christians. Who are voting labor? I'm not against labor. Okay? It's under labor. God bless me. It didn't bless me under nationality. <laughs> I'm not against labor, okay? But who are voting them? Still Christians. Even the one who implemented that law, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? Say, so now a woman can marry. It's from, you know, it's from here, what do you call it? Manorewa here. Just that she has stepped down this year. Hello, somebody. Who voted her? Christians. Because their pastors is not telling them. Also, they don't talk politics. They think that politics is evil. I don't know if I'm wasting your time this morning. So, and, uh, you know, She's a strong lady, but that area in America, I'm, a, I'm afraid, Lord, help me. But I got to say, don't come after me, woman of God. <laughs> because she's my, she's my watchman many of the time. <laughs> in, a, in America, a man that, is, have, that do not have a proper marriage cannot lead. Hello, somebody. Now, what would Beulah think? When you have a prime minister, Lord, why am I saying this thing? Just since I'm not against you, I love you, you know. Our prime minister. But, but, but why would Beulah, what would Beulah be thinking? By the way, the prime minister that is taking care of New Zealand, doing pretty, pretty well, not even married. If I were her, immediately I took over, I would just get married. That, cause, that it is called moral. So when I don't see that, I don't see morality. Hello, somebody. What example are we showing to the young people? Oh, la ba shata ma la bondo. Kritambre li capre zu capre. Lord, we give you all the glory. Now, let me show you this. It's like, Lord, I may have to be dealing with this topic next week. Uh, <clears throat> the book of Galatians 4, 22 to 23. Galatians 4, 22 to 23. I'm, I'm just trying to show how the world, how is it that the world oppresses God's people? The Bible says, for it is written that 
Abraham had two sons, okay? One by a slave and the other by a, a, a freed woman. Hello, somebody. Now, the slave woman, please listen carefully, everybody. The slave woman represents the church, uh, uh, represents the world. And the free woman represents the church. Let's keep going. He said, but the one by the slave was born according to the flesh. The world is born according to the flesh. This world, we, some of us want to copy Hollywood, you know. We want to dress like them. He said, what about Angelina Julio, you know. She, she's she not making money, you know. Is she not making money? If God is not with her, why is she making money? What about Rihanna? Why is, is she not making money? Hello, somebody. But for the fact that they are making money does not mean that they are representing God. Hello, somebody. It says, but the one by the slave was born according to the flesh. The world, the Hollywood, Gollywood, Nollywood, born according to the flesh. <laughs> Why the one by the free woman was born as, the re, as a result of what? Of a promise. Oh. The church of Jesus, we are born. Hello, somebody. Planted by the promises of God. Amen. Then 28. If you look at 28 to 29. 28 to 29. Keep going. Rabaki tika paya. The Bible says, now nah, you brothers. Why this? Please, everybody pay attention. Because if you're talking, you're going to live here without knowing what happened. Now nah, you brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. He said, as Isaac is a child of promise, so you believe us are also children of promise. In other words, you were not born carnally. You were not born by the reason of your mama's and, and papa's discussion at the middle of the night. Hello, somebody. You were born because God, hello, somebody, said something about you. Hello, somebody. Then in verse 29, then they say, but, anytime you read the Bible and then you see but, I want you to pay attention, forget everything you've read, and pay attention on, any, on the word after bad. He said, even though Amakiti Kabaya, Ligambra, Isaac was a child of promise, a child who was promised, hello somebody, to, to, to who? To Sarah. I said, this child will be born. It doesn't matter what Sarah is going through. I've given her my word. She's going to give birth a child that will change nations. He said, even though this baby have the anointing of God, he said, but just as then the child born according to the flesh, persecuted the one born according to the spirit, so also now. You see why the world sometimes, it tends to look like the world have a pan. Hello, somebody. The child of promise was being persecuted by the child of the flesh. Hello, the world persecuting the church. Unbelievers calling prophet a crazy man, a maniac. Sometimes you don't know why people you know that are not even a match to you. They are the one, they are the head of your departments. They are the ones leading and ruling. And you keep wondering, where are the anointed? Oh, some of you are quiet on me. The Bible says, but just as then the child born according to the flesh, persecuted, persecuted, the one born according to the spirit, the believer. So also now. So everything you're going through right now is in the Bible. So stop questioning, why am I going through this? You are not the only one that have the anointing, yet you're going through something. Am I talking to somebody? Some of you have the anointing, but you can't understand why things is not working for you. But I came to announce to you, it's not a strange thing that is happening to you. Whatever happened, you will still rule. You will still rule. You will still rule. So whatever you're going through today, it will not be long. You will take over because you carry something. You are a child of promise. You were not by, by, born by accident. You are not a byproduct of, of, of accident. God called you out of darkness into his marvelous life to take what belongs to you. 
Say to somebody, I have anointing. Anointing to take over. Anointing to conquer. Even though the child of flesh is criticizing you right now, it shall not be love. I say, it shall not be love. God will position you where you belong in the name of Jesus. Keep going. Let me see if I... And the, the next verse before I move on from here. God, the key, the God. The Bible says, but what does the scripture say? Hallelujah. 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 Somebody is quiet on me. Say to your neighbor, what does the scripture say? Even though the child of the flesh is ruling, what does the scripture say? Even they look like your flesh is talking to you, what does the scripture say? Even they look like the world is in power, what does the word say? Some of you, you are in pain and confused, not knowing what to do. But what does the word say? Now let me tell you what it says, but what does the scripture say? Through our the slave and her son. Son, for the one, for the son of the slave, we never inherit with the son of the free woman. <laughs> Even though she was ruling temporary, but the Lord says He will not inherit. Haggai was ruling temporary. Shabakata. Ishmael was ruling temporary. He was subduing and taking over. But the Lord said, cast him away and cast her away. It will not be long. That yoke on your neck shall be cast away. That pain in your family will be cast away. Whatever that has oppressed you will be cast away. In the name of Jesus. Have you been in a time when you carry so much, so much pain, confusion, you're going through problem, pain, you don't know when we distant end. You're doing stuff you don't want to do. And it looks like the enemy has taken over your territory, taken over your soul, taken over your environment. You don't see light. I've been in this nation, I'm still preaching crazy but when I look at my situation I don't see a real light but I have a promise in my heart the Lord always says to me the reason they can't win you is because I will not close down my church and the Lord says to me Peter open you I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against the church when I remember I am pastoring the baby of God. I tend to see light, even though in the physical, it does not look like anything was going to change in my life. Right now, it may not look like that anything is changing. But remember, you are not representing you. What you are representing is of the law. Because you carry God's baby. You are nursing God's baby. You can kill everybody in the city, but you can't kill. Moses because Moses have a sermon. Moses have an anointing to deliver the people of Israel. Some, some people been killed. A lot of people are killed. But I'm not going now because I've not fulfilled what God has called me to fulfill. Every child that was born during the days of Moses, the Bible say we are okay. But Moses' mother still find a way to hide Moses. And the Bible says when she couldn't hide him anymore, she took him by, by the sea, yet was watching over the ball with the sister. And there and then, the Bible says, Pharaoh's daughter from nowhere then went to shower. Then saw Moses and said, this baby is beautiful. He said, I will not let him die like every other person. And she took Moses and planted Moses right in the palace. While they were killing every other boy in the city, Moses was hidden right in the palace. Am I talking to somebody? They were feeding her. She went to the palace school. She eat palace food. She, I mean, he eat palace food. He was being raised like a prince, like a royal. But they did not know that the same young man they were raising was going to be the one God we use to dismantle the kingdom of Pharaoh and to shame the system. 
the Lord told me the other day, he said, in any nation where things is going bad, somebody have the oil to solve the problem. Am I talking to somebody? In every nation where there is war, political pro 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 problem, and tomorrow, if you look very well, you will discover there is somebody with an, an oil to solve that problem. That means even in this nation, if there is anything that is going wrong, you have the fire, you have the oil, you have the grace to solve the problem. Say to somebody, I'm anointed. In every nation, God will always read Jehu and will always read Johash. Who we took a man called Jehosh. Go we read Jehu and Jehoda. The assignment of Jehu and Jehoda is to anoint Jehosh. Some of you here have an assignment to anoint some people. And some people have an assignment to anoint you. And some of you, God has given you the oil to dismantle the impossible system. Am I talking to somebody? Ay, 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 ay. I said there is an oil on your life to, to dismantle an impossible system. Anytime you say this system is impossible, remember you may be the solution. Wherever you are listening to the sound of his voice, I want you to know there is an oil on you, on common oil, on common fire, on common grace to solve problems that no man can solve. I want you to know either you are the king or you have the king making anointing. Am I talking to somebody? Either you are the king or you have the king making oil. It is not possible to be ordinary. You must be in one pendulum. Sometimes God raises you to be a king maker and gives you the oil to raise men. And sometimes God put the oil in the hand of some man in order to raise you. If you are the one to be raised, receive the oil. If you are the one to be raised, receive the oil. And if you are the one to raise, locate them now. Locate them now. Locate them now. It is not possible to be nobody. No child of God ought to be a beggar. Hello, somebody. Because God is Lord over all. One man of God bet 150,000, 50,000 auditorium church. And he always say in Nigeria, he say, one dollar American money is not India. He say it's African money. <laughs> bet in Africa, the first in the world. That means God can raise you in New Zealand, in Australia. You see, few of us here, we are not even few. We're going to do things that will change this nation. Wherever there is a will, there will always be a way out. Listen, all you need to do is to know that you have an assignment. The child born of the flesh could be ruling now. But God has already planned to throw that child out. Hello, somebody. It may look like you've been oppressed and suppressed. Don't worry. The other day, as I was doing the podcast, the Lord showed me that before the problem. Oh, God, why are you taking me this area? Let me show you this scripture now. So as Isaiah, Isaiah 6, 6 to 7. Let me show you something. I saw that scripture. I don't know. I, I love to use a lot of scripture. You know what? Because of my loyalty to the word of God. It better be the word and not my word. Sometimes I can't go, I can't go without bringing the word. Because but do I ask myself, do, do the people really enjoy the scripture like I do? Because I could be deceiving myself, thinking everybody's enjoying reading. I lost somebody. Sometimes, but I find out I can't go. Even when I'm praying, I still I bring scripture. I say, Lord, why too much scripture? But I think the word is scripture. God is the word. 
So if I'm bringing scriptures, it means I'm bringing God into the content. The content is not without God. The content contains God. In fact, the content should not contain God. God himself should be the content. Let's show me this. Man, God show me this. I saw it. I was just doing podcast. And I saw, I've read the scripture from the Bible. The Bible says, then one of the seraphim, no, seven, six, seven, six to eight. Isaiah seven, six to eight. I want to show you something. Let's read with understanding. He touched my mouth with it and said, now. Nah. Oh my, seven, seven, bro, my God bless you. Love you dearly. <laughs> Let us go up again, Judah. Why that word? Everyone. Terrorize it. This is what the enemy always plans against you. And conquer it for ourselves. Then we can ensure Tabel, Tabel, son as king and eat. And the Lord said, These are the torch of the enemy. Why you are busy riding your good car? Every time when I drive my, I'm always happy. I say, Lord, praise your name. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. Hey, Lord, somebody. Remember when I had Ford Mondeo, I was celebrating, okay? Not because of this captive. I remember I told you my Range Rover is coming. <laughs> oh, some of you are thinking, some of you are thinking. <laughs> now, why this? Why this? I'm not thinking of those things, okay? I don't dream it. I don't pursue it. It's not my focus. But I know my next one is Range Rover. And I won't let nobody number it for me. It's going to be my name. It may be KMGC1. Uh, when you say one, it means two is come. Oh, 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 oh. What is this? So when you're there living in your good house, some people are thinking how to dismantle you, overthrow you, disgrace you, overwhelm you. And that's why the Bible says men ought to pray and not to faint. Because when you think you've, you've arrived, you don't even know there are people who say, we will. every president that is in power now, another candidate is warming up. What's the name of the opposition leader? Of national leader? What's the name again? What's the name? Todd, Todd, Todd. Mola Todd. Now, is it Todd? Now, he, he's, well, every of his prayer, he wants to dismantle, overthrow, take that seat over from Jacinda. Um, but I don't know how possible unless God. Not <coughs> because um, COVID have made her name. So some people have lost her during COVID. And some people won during COVID. Some will become perpetually poor for years to come. And some will become extremely rich because of COVID. That is how this world works. It's making some people rich and making some people poor. But it's not your portion. So while you're doing this thing, the enemies, they are conspiring every night. Thinking how to overthrow you. That's why you must never live without fasting and praying. Never a week I don't go with fasting and praying. Never. It's been a long time I come out of Just keep eating. In fact, my stomach, the way it's going, I'm even afraid. <laughs> I realized this morning I couldn't even lock my distance. For the first time. <laughs> For the first time I couldn't lock my tube. I said, what is happening? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> I said, then when I was driving here, I said, I said, I think in the beginning, when we came back about three months ago, I said, I think my wife overfed me. <laughs> so it's all her fault. <laughs> because anytime I, I, I want to break my fast, he will bring all sort of things, you know. And uh, I told her one day, I said, please reduce it. I'm t I find that I'm overeating right now. <laughs> so since that time, my sh shape of my stomach has changed. <laughs> And I'm really, really afraid. <laughs> mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Jesus, mercy. Okay, let's get back now. Now, what they say, we want to overthrow this guy and, and take his kingdom and overthrow, I think, Ahaz. Now, look at what the Bible says. This is what the Lord God says. Yeah, this very word. It will not happen, it will not occur. Use the other translation. Even though they, were, they are already planning. 
he overthrew you. But, but in the process of planning, even before the conspiracy you know, begin to take place, the Lord say, has already said, it will not happen. It will not take place. And this is how God deals with the child of God. So though the enemy is there planning, we will disgrace him, we will waste him. I find out that what fought me in this city was not immigration. It was a principality in the city. They have done everything to dismantle us because they are jealous, jealous of where the church is going. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, but why they had, why they concocted that evil, heaven had already said in eternity, yeah. it will not happen and they will not what take place. Yeah. Now check the scripture. Say, Tell say the Lord to Prince. Please put your name. Tell say the Lord to Prince. It shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Now why? Now let's, let's, let's see why. Kaliba, Kaliba, move on. He said, for, this, for the head of Syria is Damascus. Hello, somebody. Now, the head of Syria, their capital is Damascus. They don't have God. And the head of Damascus is Raisin. The Raisin being the king. It's flesh. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken. That it, because Ephraim, the northern kingdom, conspire with the Assyrians to dismantle the southern kingdom. So, shall Ephraim be broken that it be not a people again? That means why they were planning to ruin your life. God has already given a prophecy. that uh, Sometimes the prophetic word of God have gone ahead of that conspiracy. Because God sees the end from the beginning, from ancient time, what is still to come. Isaiah 46, verse 10. So, you see, Ephraim, raising is flesh. Ephraim is flesh. Hello, somebody. God is trying to say, because they do not have God, it shall not happen. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons we come to church. When you come to church, you begin to have perspective. The, the kingdom, the word of God, offers you perspective. It helps you to see what the word says and not what the word because once you see what the word of God says, even when that thing is coming after you, you will not go and take poison and put it in your mouth. Lord, somebody, you know that somehow, someday, you will be free from this pain. Yeah. Lord, somebody, the Bible says, for the, for the, oh my, you have gone out of that scripture. I want to show you something. I, I, I did talk a little bit in Isaiah 4, this is, Verse 10, he says something. I want you to know the scripture. Since I know the scripture, I've never forgotten it for one day. He said, declaring the end from the beginning. From ancient time, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So God declares the end from the beginning. Saying, my counsel will stand. So before that evil conspiracy is being, you know, planned and yanked in the spirit against you, God have already said, it will not stand. Because God sees the end from the beginning. Amen. That means even if I don't have a job now, I already have a job in the spirit. Hello, somebody. I don't have a husband now that's a man or a woman for me. In the spirit, God have already decided. I may be afraid of my future. Many young people are always fearful of the future. Hello, somebody. Many young people, they don't know. Sometimes they come out from school, they don't know what to do. They are confused with life. Hello. And if they don't have God, the enemy will overwhelm them. But if you have God, you know that no matter what happens, God will not disgrace you. Because you are God best shot. You are God best shot. How we go? It takes God about 20 years to raise a quality man of God, a believer. So how we go discard you at this time? It is not possible. So once you know this, hello somebody, you are rest assured in your spirit that no matter what, hello somebody, no matter the name they have called you, they have called you a holy God, they, have called, you no, they called you non-entity, they called you a fool, they criticized you, Alone, alone. They, they bite, bite, bite you. They eat you at dinner and their breakfast and lunch. You become their discussion. Hello, somebody. But God is saying, that's my boy. That's my girl. 
The enemy is saying, oh, you, you have school right now. Where is the job? <laughs> if they couldn't stop you schooling, would they not stop you from getting a job? For the fact that you have a certificate means you have given God something to bless. Bless something. I'm looking at how much now we're raising almost, our money is almost growing to about 100,000, almost growing up. I was thinking that we're going to make it before the end, but the way I'm looking at it now, it looks like in the next few months, we're going to have at least 100,000. So now, and, and this morning, as we're praying, I say, my wife was saying, Lord, you say, you say, give us, give you something to bless. So this little thing we are gathering now. Hello, somebody. We are giving God something to bless. If we all can have commitment, we are building the church for our children. I say, Lord, you know, you throw some pain or whatever change. My wife, it's before she got a job, I'm sorry to say. She said, she told God, anytime she make overtime, she will be paying the money to church account. In the last five weeks, she's been doing overtime. All those money she has given over, just not our own building fund money. This is just her, and this is commitment to the Lord. Hello, somebody. She's been giving, I think she has given over a thousand dollars in the last five weeks. Only from overtime she's doing. Hello, somebody. <coughs> Putting into the rent account. This is how to build the kingdom. So the day God launched her at now, don't get jealous because you don't know her story. Oh, oh nobody's talking to me. Because sometimes we talk about people's no glory, but we don't know their story. Before you jealous my glory, first check me out and know my story. If you know where I'm coming from, then you can talk about me. Hello, somebody. I want you to know that God's hand is on this church and God's hand in, is in, on us. All you, know, you need to do is receive this you know, engrafted word of life. Let it be inculcated into your spirit. So when you live here today, you know, forget about all those people you have anointed and now they have discarded you. Hello, somebody. They discarded that man. They, they nullified his prophetic ministry. They nullified, I mean, his character. But the man was still a prophet. You know that? <clears throat> What they said about the man did not do what? Did not ever throw him. Elisha did not throw him out. They say all those things, but the man was still functioning. So stop looking at what they said. If they don't talk about you, who would they talk about? Hello, somebody. Somebody sent me a text the other day and said some people were talking about me. I said to her, I said, if you've got to understand that if that means you're making news, you make the news and they read the news. Let's <laughs> <laughs> some, some people, all they do in their life is to they, they read the news. But some of us are newsmakers. We make the news. Every news you're reading, somebody made it happen. Lost somebody. So, so if you want to be on the new, new, news reading level, just be there. But if you want to make the news, get ready to be criticized. Get ready to be misunderstood. Get ready, ready to be redefined negatively. But does that remove the anointing from you? Not at all. One man of God in my country, highly anointed. He said, I've been saying all these bold things because the man sometimes found with the government too many things. And he said, people said, I'm proud. He said, but they, they, they've been saying this thing for many years. God is still moving. It hasn't changed yet. They've been, you know, criticizing you for many years. You're in New Zealand. They're still talking about you. Hello, somebody. You get a job. They're still talking about you. You graduated. They're still talking about you. Hello, somebody. They're still in one spot. You are in the church right now. They're still talking about you. Hello, somebody. You are worshiping God. You know, experiencing the oil of God. They are saying she's just gone to church. When she come back, now she's the same. Okay, let them be there. Hello, somebody. You're receiving information. You will get better than them. So God's people, rise up. Be that man. Be that woman. Don't let what they say remove the heart from your hand. Shall we rise and give him praise? Father, we give you glory. We give you praise and glory. Somebody rise and give him praise. Say, Lord, I receive your word. Lord, I receive your word. He de Lord, I receive your word. Lord, I believe your word. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient time, the things that are not yet done. Say, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody declare the word of God over your life. Declare the word of God over your life. Oh, Rabba Sakalaba. Begin to declare the word. Say, Lord, I will make it. It doesn't matter what the devil does. 
and says, I will make it. It doesn't matter what the devil does and says, I will make it. It doesn't matter what the devil does and says, Halaba seke liberando. He talk about gada gada gada. Somebody give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Oh, Rabba Saka. Kalaba Saka Laba Yadaga. Say, Lord, give me that oil. Give me that oil. I am ready to make things. It doesn't matter what they say about me. I am ready to make things. God, give me that oil. I receive that oil. I receive that grace. I receive that fire. Kataka paya gada gada gada. Lord Jesus, somebody open your mouth and cry out to him. Is there any place you feel pinched? Is there any place you've been redefined wrongly? They have gossiped, they get you, they have overlooked you. But I want you to give it to God right now. I say, Lord, thank you. Even when they gossip me, I still have the horn. I'm still a servant of Elijah, Elisha. I am still a servant of God. He Somebody pray. Malindu Kalaba. Say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need your word. Maybe you're being ruled by the, by the son of a slave woman. Even though you are the child of promise. But right now the son of a slave woman. The daughter of a slave woman is the one heading you. Heading your department. Telling you what to do at work. And they don't understand your spirit and who you are. They are criticizing you. But God will see you through. He will see you through. He will see you through. Somebody turn it to prayer. Lord, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Somebody cry out to him. Jesus, we break every yoke. Anything people have said against you is broken now. Any wrong view about you is broken now. Anything they cast on you is broken now. He Any I don't know how people see you, but in this season, in this hour, I pray that God will raise you above what they have said. May God raise you above what they have said. May God raise you above how they see you. May God raise you above how they see you. In the name of Jesus. I wanted to pray and say, Lord Jesus, raise me up for your glory above how men, how women see me. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, raise me up. In this nation and beyond, above how they see me, how they defy me, how they look at me. Oh Lord, I break every demonic word spoken over me, said about me by men and women who do not believe in me. I break that word, I break such ways. I break conspiracy. Nah, 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 nah. Every wicked way that is limiting me limiting. in the society, in, the society. in my world, break now, break now, break now, break, 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 in the name of Jesus. Anything. The enemy, the enemy has cast on me, has cast on my world, cast on my ministry, cast on my calling, is broken now. 
is broken now. Is broken now. In the name of Jesus. What we are praying is important prayer. I want you to know that. Many of you have not gotten things that you ought to have received by now because of what somebody said about you. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Some people have made decisions based on what they say and not what you've done. Look at how they saw, how they were looking at that prophet, how they were perceiving him. In other words, if they had anything good, they would not give to him. Hello, somebody. Prior to that time, they would not do anything for him because their view of him wasn't right. I wanted to say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Anyone, anyone that have, that have negative, view negative view of me, of me. right now, right now. redraw that, that view in their heart, in their heart. redraw me in, in their eyes, in their, in their mind, in their, in their soul. In the name of Jesus, name of Lord Jesus. Jesus. I receive, I receive the oil, the oil that, make that make kings. It doesn't matter it doesn't what they think what and what they say about me. I redraw everything they have said for my good. For my good. For my good. For my good. If there is anybody that will be sent to anoint kings, I am the one. I am the one. I am the one in the midst of many. May I be outstanding in the midst of thousands. May I be outstanding in the name of Jesus. I receive that oil that make things. Oh Lord, send me to this nation, to the new country of this nation to raise men, to raise women in the name of Jesus. And I pray that this oil that is raising kings, let it be poured on me. Pour it on me for good in the name of Jesus. Anything that is battling with me is not, not terminated. Destroyed. Nullified. In the name of Jesus. I am a history maker. A world changer. In the name of Jesus. Their views about me will not change me. Will not change my calling. Will not change my word. Your grace is on me. Your power is on me. Any door that is closed against me, I break it open. Now. Now. Any wicked door that have risen any iron gate that is raised up, that is erected to hinder my glory, my becoming, I shatter that door. Now, 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 I take over in the spirit realm and I take over in the physical realm. I take over in the spirit realm and I take over in the physical realm. I take over in the spirit realm and I take over in the spiritual realm in the physical realm. I rule and I reign with Christ. I am not on that. I am above and over flying under the anointing in the name of Jesus. The finger of God have met me. The spirit of God has given me life. I will not die before my time. I come against sickness and disease that is ravaging my life. Now, any 
any wickedness uh, fight in my family. Nah, I shut you down. I cut you off in my family. Let life enter my home, enter my family, enter my root, enter my line, enter me now. I live a new life. I walk in power. I run in power. The hand of God is on my life. I am above. I am not beneath because I have. The revelation, revelation of the word of God. Of word. I am ruling with I God, running with God. Running God. Nothing that has been said we hinder, we hinder the, glory, the glory, the heart, the oil, the oil that, I that I carry in the name of Jesus. Somebody give him praise. Glory. Lord, we thank you. Just thank him. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we give you praise. And we give you honor. If you're here today, and anything, if there's anything that has been held back, that truly belongs to you, is now released to you. Amen. Spiritually, the doors are open. Amen. Now walk and take what belongs to you. Amen. Take what belongs to you. Amen. Nothing that keep pulling you back. We pull you back no more. Amen. The rope is broken Amen. like a flask. Amen. The chains are broken Amen. like a flask. Amen. You are not failing. Amen. You will not fail. Amen. You will make it. Amen. You will live. Amen. You will rule. Amen. You will reign. Amen. You will not borrow. Yes, you will not beg. Amen. If the enemy have designed you to lose all you have in order to beg, I say no to it. I cook here today in the word of God. In the name of Jesus, any slave woman that has taken your position is not terminated by the reason of Galatians 4 verse 30. That slave woman is terminated now in the name of Jesus. If you're here right now, before I close, matter of time, and you know you've not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. Something always tells me that if I have not given my life to God, I probably will not be alive by now. I always feel that way. And I know I'm alive today. Because of that single decision I made many years ago. When I made that decision, I didn't know I was going to be a preacher in New Zealand. I was just a local country boy. Just made a decision. Was in love with God. Was always thrown into the temple. Nobody ever pushed me to go to church. From the day I went to the charismatic church, nobody ever pushed me. I lost somebody to go to church. Though there was a time I slowed down. Just for temporary for, for, for a few weeks. It's not that I don't like church. It's just because I got into something. Oh, some of you don't know talking to me right now. And then I slowed down with fellowship. And the two of the brothers came to visit me. And they said to me, you're no longer coming to fellowship as you used to come. I said to them, do you need to go to fellowship to be a Christian? Before I could finish saying it, the brother rebuked me and said, this sounds like a voice of a backslider. Say, shut up. This sounds like a And from that day, I woke up. And from that day, nobody, dead or alive, have ever pushed me to seek God. It has been my decision. Because this is where I belong. If you take me out from the Lord, I will be like a fish. I will just die in a second. Some of you, are, you struggle to come to church on Sundays. I wonder, what kind of God do you serve? You struggle to come to church on Sunday? And they don't struggle to go to church job on, 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 on to your work on Monday. They don't struggle to take shower. And they don't struggle to eat. I told my daughters yesterday to fold the clothes. And my wife brought. They said to me, they fold yesterday. You know, can they wait? They, they will fold today because they fold in the two days ago. I said, did you eat yesterday? They say yes. I said, did you shower yesterday? I said, they, what? you fought yesterday, but you ate yesterday. I said, have you eaten this morning? They say yes. I said, did you eat afternoon? They say yes. I said, go for the cloth. <laughs> the last somebody, 
You went to church last week. This week you say no. You, you don't, if you don't go to church, you're not showing love to God. Do you go to work? But you don't go to church. What is it? Then you don't have experience. You've not encountered God. It's out of love. Hello. I worship God out of my love. I don't worship God for money. I don't worship him for position. I don't worship him because of microphone. I worship him because I love him. Take me out. Take me out. For one second, I will be gone. I don't enjoy anything. Ask her. She know. I only enjoy the presence of God. Only the presence of God.